The main reason for our fence, one is to stop human-wildlife conflict, two is to demarcate our boundary. Human-wildlife conflict obviously being the single most important thing. That we built a fence that cost us, what, $16 a metre. We ended up configuring a fence that cost us $2 a metre. It's trial and error and we, we must have tried 10 or 12 different things, but it came down to configuration and it came down to a lot of effort and dedicated people, one knowing the individual elephants, where they broke it and how they broke it before we could get to, to stopping it. Lee's the biggest elephant in that group. He's the biggest elephant in that group? Yeah. And he teaches them? Yeah, I'm not sure about teaching them, but uh, he's the leader. He's the leader? Yeah. 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 It's easy broken. It's broken. The elephant's just here. They're about to break this fence line. This is a group of very naughty bulls. And what they do is at about this time towards dusk, they gather up in a group like this, just next to the, the fence. Um, then they all together they'll suddenly break the fence and they'll come out at night as one group and they'll go raiding crops and they'll come back um, in the first thing in the morning and come back in. It's not all elephants that break fences, it's just elephants like this. And there's such an incentive to go and raid crops because if they get that extra nutrient boost, it means they can compete with other males better um, to go and for, for, for females. So earlier on we've had cases of elephants breaking the posts and uh, what you have here is a very good example. This was a seven feet tall post that was broken down by elephants and you can see there's a, a portion that was brought down. The wire is not cut in any section and that means the wire probably is very effective and they are now using the post. You can see the tusks actually places where the task was used to push down the post and that's uh, one of the challenges that now we are facing in terms of the fence management and configuration. The elephants actually managed to get into the ranch through this section and as we mentioned before you could see that uh, they avoided the wire as much as possible and only stepped on the post. Uh, one of the elephants broke this post and managed to get back into the ranch. But the other 11 who could not break the post actually jumped or rather forced their way across the wire. And as you've seen down there, they didn't cut the wire, but they tried to jump over it and therefore forcing it to go down. Once elephants have broken a fence section like this, eh, uh, as part of the monitoring and reporting system that you have to make sure the fence performance is en enhanced, we have got a community elephant scout on the ground who works alongside the, the rapid response team to gather information on the fence uh, breakage incident. Now all this information is then forwarded to the office in a central database which show exactly where the destructions are occurring and what can therefore be done to reduce the destruction. Not all elephants are fence breakers. We've got those who are known fence breakers and if they can be identified and then uh, proper control measures are, are put in place. For example, they can be eliminated if they have been identified uh, positively. Uh, another way could be detasking. A better percentage of fence breakages actually involve elephants using their tasks. If they can be detasked and then monitored properly, we could be able to state categorically that detasking can be one of the measures. Elephants that do break the fence do come closer to the fence as evening approaches. And if we could have a rapid response team that respond to the elephants immediately they have been identified closer to the fence, chances are they will learn to respect that boundary. And if this happens, the pressure on the fence is likely to be reduced by keeping the elephants away from the fence. Yesterday was the first day of the unit in the field, and today we had a chance with them actually trying to see practically how they, are, they, they operate. And what we saw today was a culmination of you know, coordinated work between the Kenya Wildlife Service and scouts in the field. I'm ready. With the support of the Kenya Wildlife Service and the availability of the vehicle to you know, quickly rush behind them, we were able to chase all of them, about 10 elephants plus two more were actually hanging out here and they joined up to make 12 elephants and they all walked back into the ADC range. Uh, you, could, you, could, you notice that we used quite minimal force just by the presence of the vehicle and also shooting blank uh, bullets into the air. We were able to send them back without causing any more damages. And the response of the team is also quite important because they were able to come in time to avoid cases of elephants raiding crops late in the evening. Let's go back to the days. Follow them as they go this way. Trying to make those fences work is very challenging. You've got issues of configuration, so what does the fence look like? The second issue of maintenance and the third of enforcement. And so 
what we're trying to do is roll out a program across Lycipia where each of those aspects of fence management can can work, um, and that's 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 been a, a big challenge, but it, but we're doing it.